We have a state senator named Dale Schultz uh, from Wisconsin. Now, he's a Republican, and he's been a Republican a long, long time. He's held his Senate seat for 23 years. He's also served in the State Assembly. That was for 10 years, so he's been there an incredibly long time. In fact, he stood for election 12 times. Okay, he's been a Republican in times good and in times bad, as an old friend would say. So, uh, what's he doing now? Leaving. He's had enough. Uh, he's leaving the race entirely. He's not going to run for re-election. He's got a Republican primary against him. Why? The Koch brothers think he's not Republican enough. Okay, so let's tell you his story. First, he says, the business of politics has changed. And I firmly believe that we are beginning in this country to look like a Russian-style oligarchy where a couple of dozen billionaires have basically bought the government. Damn. And unfortunately, that is way too true. He's right about that. We got Democrats complaining about it. We got Republicans complaining about it. Carl Levin, who's a Democrat from Michigan, said, I'm so tired of raising money. That's why I'm not going to run for re-election. He would easily win in Michigan. He's been there a long time. He's just like, I'm just exhausted. You know, they spend 30 to 70% of their time raising money uh, if you're in national politics. 30 to 7, when, when do you legislate? That's why they're probably at a record low number of bills that are passed, because they don't have time to legislate. They're all out there going, please give me money, please give me, I'll do anything, I'll do anything for you. Do you know that if you're a U.S. Senator, you have to raise an average of $30,000 a week to get reelected? 95% of the time, the guy with more money wins, okay? So that's why they gotta hit the phones and they gotta spend all that time. I recently talked to a U.S. Congressman who said, and I asked him, hey, do you ever get to go out for lunch with other Democrats or Republicans? Is there any kind of friendliness left in Washington? He said, are you kidding me? If they caught us having lunch, and by they he meant his own staff, they'd throw you right back in a calling room to make sure you were calling funders. So this is the pathetic life that they live now, begging for money and promising people bribes. And Dale Schultz didn't want any part of it anymore, and he recognized the heart of the problem. And he continues, and you know what? I always thought the job of a representative in government was to represent the people. But unfortunately, that's not where we stand. Now, Occupy.com wrote a really good article about this, and they explained uh, one of the factors that affected Schultz's decision. They said, Schultz announced his retirement from his career as a legislator as he faced a primary challenge from the right by Representative Howard Mark Klein, a Republican from Spring Green who has already raised over $100,000 for the next election and is backed by the Koch brothers funded Americans for Prosperity who made it a priority to oust Senator Schultz. Now think about that, he's been a Republican for decades, he's been serving as a state rep, senator as a Republican, they're like no not good enough, you're not conservative enough. What was his cardinal sin? He didn't vote for Scott Walker's bill to take away negotiation rights from public employees because he thought well if you're by yourself well management can fire you. I mean, we all know that you've got to be able to band together in order to have more strength. In fact, the Koch brothers, twice a year, get all the millionaires and billionaires that are right wing together, and they say, we must band together so that we are stronger together in buying these elections. So they like it when it comes to them. They don't like it when it comes to the actual workers. And Schultz, a Republican, said, hey, that's the one I, of all the different things, that's the one I'm not going to vote with the Republican governor on. Nope, sorry, okay immediately a hundred thousand dollar primary against him and a lot more where that came from would have backed it up if he hadn't left the race. By the way, how much did the 2011 recall election cost in Wisconsin? It was just, you know, nine legislators that were being recalled. Forty four million dollars. That's an insane amount of money. And Schultz complains about money from both sides, by the way. You know, the unions put in money, the Koch brothers put in money, and they get into this race because everybody's got to buy that election. It's a buy-off, right? And now you think those guys are going to be honest and actually represent the people they represent? Supposedly represent? No, they're representing the donors who gave them the $44 million to win those elections. So, Schultz continues, as long as Citizens United stands, we'll see more money come into politics. We'll come to see less discussion of the issues and more of the ads that everyone hates but still seems to have an impact. He says, it puts good people on both sides of the aisle in a very difficult situation, because they know that if they try to represent their constituents, they're going to be faced with a torrent of money by people who arrogantly believe they will be able to buy enough space or time to drown out any other message but their own. 
Now the reality is, of course, arrogant or not, well, they can buy these elections. Like I said, at the national level, 95% of the time, the guy with more money wins. And by the way, it's not just Republicans. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican. It doesn't matter if you're a liberal or conservative. It doesn't matter what you think at all. The most determinative factor is money. Who's got more of it? So they all get bought off. So he continues, when you introduce a torrent, an ocean of money into politics, old elements are present to push towards more extremism in politics. And I think that sort of exploded with the decision in Citizens United. Uh, very right about that. Now he talks about coming from a Republican perspective. And I love this quote. He says, as a Republican, I have always thought that business should have access to the public square. I never thought anybody should be able to buy the public square. And that's really about where we're at right now. Look, that's about as good a line as there is. And that's exactly what's happening. Now, that's why I told you, look, you know, which this is our number one issue here. And we've been telling you about money and politics. The reason it's number one issue for the Young Turks is because every story leads back to that. You want to know how they're going to vote? Which side is the money on? It works, I was going to say almost every time, but I literally can't think of a time that it, that equation did not work. Okay? So, that's why we founded, I founded Wolfpack, right? Because we've got to get the money out of politics, otherwise this show isn't worth doing. Gee, I wonder where, which way they're going to go. I can tell you. <laughs> My track record, it's not, it's not because I'm a genius that I can figure out which way the legislation is going to go, which way the votes are going to go. You just do the math. Whoever's got more money, whoever bribed more politicians will win. Sometimes it's liberals because of unions. Sometimes on certain issues like gay rights, we have more money than the conservatives do and we'll win from now on till the end of time, okay? But most of the time, it's multinational corporations and incredibly rich folks like the Koch brothers. And they don't just go after Democrats. In Kansas, they did a coup where they ousted a great number of Republicans that have been conservative, they're Kansas Republicans. They were conservative to the hilt. The Koch brothers said, you, it's not that you're not sufficiently conservative, it's that you're not sufficiently doing our bidding. So off you go. So they can buy all these elections. Now luckily, at the local level, yes, some states are affected. Obviously they're very present in Wisconsin. Obviously, the Koch brothers, whose base is in Kansas, has bought off the Kansas legislature. But they're not everywhere. And we can win this fight. But we've got to get an amendment. We've got to. And you've got to do it through the state level. So that's why, if you go to wolf-pack.com, we need your help and we can do it together. Look, they don't want you to band together. As the billionaires are banding together, the one thing they want to prevent most is all of us working together, because they know that's the one thing that can defeat them. Wolf-pack.com. Let me give you one last parting thought from Senator, State Senator Dale Schultz. I would hate to have this country look like Ukraine or Egypt, but I think that's where we're headed as a country, unless people stand up and say, enough is enough, we're going to change this. So listen to him, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, liberal or conservative. It's time to stand up and change that system. Let's go back to honest debates, man. I'd love to debate the Republicans on an honest footing where neither one of us has an unnatural advantage because we have more money on that side. Let's get our democracy back.